afternoon. Welcome to Back to Buck concert series by Oxford Buck Solos. I'm Yu Wei, a historical folktist from Taiwan. And I'm Johan from Sweden, and I play the Theor Bow. Today we're going to present a beautiful program containing mostly Bach's uh, flute compositions. Flute was considered only a melody instrument back in the 18th century, as flute players cannot provide harmony on their own, therefore solo composition doesn't make any sense. Most of flute compositions use flute as the treble melody, accompanied by a bass continuum line for the bass player, either theobo, harpsichord, or cello, to play alone, um, providing there is a figure. And uh, that's what we're going to do in this first piece, which is a movement, Andante, from the E minor sonata by Bach, uh, where there is an almost ground bass-like accompaniment, which I will then gently improvise on while the very beautiful flute part happens on top. So that's the first piece we're going to play. Hope you enjoy. Yes.
So, as many of you might have already known, this is what we call for flute or traverso nowadays. It is a wooden one key flute. So, quite, com quite compared to the modern flute, it's quite different. It's constructed in conical shape and it is in D major scale. So, this is how D major scale sounds like. This is what we call a good strong scale on Baroque flute. And if you want to play any note outside D major scale, you will need to do something we call cross fingering, which is you open a finger, a hole, before the last one. So the air comes out before reaching the last hole, you create a very mysterious uh, mellow sound. So this is how a D minor scale sounds like. So depending on the combination of notes, every single key or scale um, sounds very, very different on the Baroque flute. In the 18th century, all the composers will have this idea in mind before they actually choose a, a specific key for a composition. That they will have a strong D major, um, angelic G major, or a, a very um, sorrowful um, F minor, for example. Yeah, so um, depending on the key they have been chosen, they have already decided uh, what this composition will sound like beforehand. Next piece I'm going to play is the Bure Anglais from the very rare solo composition for Baroque flute in the 18th century, the Partita in A minor by Bach. Some of you might wonder what this strange looking instrument really is. Uh, I'm not sure it can even fit into the camera, but uh, this is what they call a theorbo. 
and really it's an Italian invention uh, from the late 16th century and it developed around the same time as the art of opera and this was an attempt to try to make the beautiful sound of the lute slightly more powerful in the bass and middle register to support the voices on a bigger operatic stage um, and yeah thus this uh, very long neck was born um, and of course it is slightly more powerful than the smaller renaissance lutes um, that's a really nice low bass G there and this instrument became really really popular throughout the 17th century spread all across Europe uh, and was used in orchestras as well as for chamber music uh, however during the mid 18th century so around the time of Bach's death it's starting to decline as the music, uh, music style changes and so on. Um, I made a little arrangement though of the prelude from Bach's first cello suite in G major. And this is a quite well known piece, but when you play it on the Theorbo, you get these new ways of handling the melodic lines because of all the open strings I have. I can somehow sometimes play the tune on one string, and sometimes I can let the strings ring into each other and create new blends. So um, I very much enjoyed the process of arranging this piece and um, I hope you will enjoy it too. Thank you. So, Yue, why do we wish to get back to the music of Johann Sebastian Bach? Um, well, performing Bach's music has always been a very spiritual experience for me. However, due to the pandemic this year, all our early music friends has missed the best time of year, the Easter, mm -hmm. to gather together and enjoy Bach's music. 
Yes, because that's the time when we get to perform many of the passions and other choral works. Um, but you've been part of some quite nice and interesting uh, online performances of Bach, haven't you? Yes. Um, the first one was actually the St. John Passion Isolation by Oxford Bach soloist. It was a very interesting pro uh, program. and. Yeah, it was like yes. a nice uh, experience for you to do with all this kind of recording in different places and stuff. Yeah, that was the first time we did that. Yes. I still haven't really done that, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then the second one we did together was the um, music offering online marathon uh, mm -hmm. initiated by the Wei Concert Hall in Taiwan, my home country. And this is the third one, a uh, very wonderful one. Yes, and I mean, as a theobo player, I'm sometimes almost a bit scared of approaching the music of Bach because there are all these dense bass lines with lots of figures and I'm like, ooh, can I play that? Um, but actually, having had some time to really go even deeper into the music have also led me to discover more about my instrument. So this has been, you know, despite all the difficulties, a kind of musically interesting and sometimes really nice time, I think. Um, and what we're doing today um, has really much been part of that. We're going to finish this concert with the Allegro from Johann Sebastian Bach's E minor flute sonata. Thank you. Thank you. 
much for having joined us for this concert. If you wish to support Oxford Bach soloists and our endeavours in trying to keep music live during this period, um, please go to our website and find ways you can support us. And um, have a really nice afternoon and we have had a very good time. Hope you did too. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye.